So you're driving your car, maybe you just got in it and started it, and you notice that a red warning light came on and stayed on on the dash. It looks like a battery. Now what do you think that indicates? Is it a problem with the battery? Do you need a new battery? Is it a problem in the rest of the charging system, like the alternator or anything else? Let's start with the alternator, which, by the way, if you need one, check us out, moneyauto.com. Talking about the basics of the alternator, what is its job? And technically, it's kind of split into two jobs. One is supplying the vehicle with enough electricity as it's running, voltage and amperage, but it's also in charge of charging the battery and keeping it topped off so that next time you go to start your vehicle, you have enough juice in that battery to crank it over and keep it going. Or start it. Now all of this needs to be regulated because it can't just put out a bunch of voltage and amperage with no limit. Otherwise it could fry some components and of course overcharge the battery. So the voltage regulator that's built into the back of this alternator is what's going to do that by communicating with the computer, seeing the battery voltage, seeing where everything is at, seeing the demand of the vehicle, depending on what accessories you have on, like headlights, wipers, blower motor, whatever you have on, and it will adjust to either put out more amperage or less amperage, because it's not good if it oversupplies. It's also obviously not good if it's undersupplying. And oversupply and undersupply is exactly what happens when these go bad. They can go bad in two different ways. Most of the time, it honestly just starts undersupplying and then, well, it's not gonna put out what you need. But that's what it does. It's just constantly supplying the vehicle with everything it needs to keep going. Let's talk about the battery now. It is here basically as a reserve of electricity. Like I said, every time you start your car, the electricity comes from the battery. It is also here to supply a burst of electricity when needed when certain electrical components turn on, such as your cooling fan, high beams or even low beams, wipers, blower motor, anything that basically requires a sudden burst of energy or electricity, the alternator can't do that. It is just there to slowly supply it, but the battery is here as a reserve to instantly provide it, otherwise that electrical component won't work. But the battery also needs to be healthy in order to do that. Corrosion on battery terminals is extremely common, yet very damaging to, well, the connectors, but also the electrical system because it prevents a good connection from happening, so it can't charge well, it can't distribute the power well, and it'll eat away the battery terminal that is on the wire side. So it's basically going to disintegrate over time, especially if you leave that corrosion there. In this particular scenario, it's very clean, but if you see a lot of green, bluish, bubbly, fuzzy, corrosion, that's something you want to clean off. You can clean it off with some cleaner that's specifically designed for this or just some baking soda and water. Of course, disconnect it because what that does is it actually gets right between the contact points here. It prevents a good connection from happening, so power can't really go in and out very smoothly. It creates resistance, but it can also deteriorate the battery terminals that are well, right here and here, it will eat them away, whether they're copper, aluminum, or whatever the metal they are, it will actually damage them to the point where they could even break, and obviously that's not gonna make any connection at all at that point with your battery. A multimeter or voltmeter is not the ultimate test for either the battery or the alternator, but it's a very good one, and it's easy to test it with this, honestly, and most people could do this if they doubt that the battery or the alternator is having issues. Like I said, it doesn't tell you everything, but it tells you the voltage output. Now for the battery, it's supposed to be between 12.4, 12.6 maybe, as the battery is at rest. So after it sat for a little bit with the engine off, alternator not charging it. Anywhere below that, that's questionable. Now, as the alternator is spinning with the engine on, it should hover around 14 volts. If it's a little bit below, maybe anywhere between 13 and a half or a little bit over up to 14 and a half, that's okay. It just, it really depends on the vehicle, on the alternator output. It's gonna depend, really. So what you wanna see is around 14 volts. Now, if it's way below that, let's say your vehicle's on, you're measuring it and you're getting 13, maybe 12, high 12s, not good. Alternator is definitely not putting out what it's supposed to. One more thing is if you suspect a low battery, 
You can check it while the vehicle's cranking, and if you see the voltage dip anywhere below 10, 10 and a half volts, that's a weak battery. It shouldn't dip that low. It should hover around 10 and a half to 11 volts as it's cranking. If you remember earlier in the video, I asked if you could guess what the battery light stands for when it comes on on the dash, and if you guessed bad alternator or at least improper output by the alternator, well, you guessed right because that's what it is. It doesn't actually tell you you need a battery. Now, in your situation, maybe you do need a battery as well as an alternator or at least fixing whatever connection is going bad, but you don't always need a battery when that light is on. Now, I also mentioned earlier that one being bad does affect the other, so keep that in mind as you're trying to fix these issues. Here's a fun fact about alternators. The voltage regulator in them is supposed to keep the voltage about the same, eh, within half a volt maybe at most, maybe a quarter of a volt, and the amperage, well, it's only gonna deliver what it needs. So revving up your engine doesn't necessarily produce more output from the alternator because as long as the voltage regulator is working properly, it should stay right where the engine and the computer and the battery wants it to be. 